Imagine a reservoir containing fluids at temperatures near the melting point of lead. The challenge that we've always had is that it's high pressure, it's high temperature. And with pressures of around six tonnes per square inch. The pressures we're looking at subsea are about 12,500 PSI. Temperatures are around about 150 degrees C. This was the challenge faced by the operator Chevron and co-venturer ConocoPhillips in developing the Alder field. We're stretching the capabilities of existing technology. There are at least seven Chevron technology firsts in the project. Alder was discovered back in 1975, so that's a long time ago and to develop it in a cost-efficient manner that delivers the most value has meant we needed new technology, we needed breakthrough and innovation. I think we looked at it in 2000, we looked at it in 2006, uh, and this time in 2009 the technology was there and the capacity in Britannia, the host platform, was there as well to take it. Chevron decided to use advances in subsea pipeline design to tie the field back to the ConocoPhillips Britannia platform some 28 kilometres away. Once the gas reached the seabed, it needed to be cooled. The subsea cooling loop we've developed specifically to cool the production flow from the well that comes out of the ground around about 150 degrees, down to about 115 as it enters the pipeline. The thing with having the temperature at that point is we then need to keep it warm to prevent hydrates and keep the flow moving. The technology we've used here is pipe-in-pipe uh, -pipe design, so that's an inner pipeline and an outer pipeline with a dry cavity, and it's the uh, insulation we can put in that dry cavity that allows us to keep everything warm in the pipeline. The subsea system and top sites use some of the latest ideas and materials available and are a showcase for the UK's world-leading subsea manufacturing and engineering skills. Part of Alder, it's been really important that we leverage the UK talent and the supply chain that exists here in country. It truly is a centre of excellence. So we put 70% of the total spend of the project into the UK local supply chain. So we have the trees from Leeds, the umbilical from Newcastle, the valves from Newcastle. The engineering was done in London with backup from Aberdeen and the, the main contracts run from Aberdeen. If all things are equal and there's a UK source, that's where we're going to go to. Because we really place high value on being the partner of choice. In order to successfully receive and process the gas and condensate, ConocoPhillips needed to make significant modifications to the Britannia platform, including the installation of a new UK manufactured processing module. We're constricted by the existing platform. This particular module has a uh, weight limitation of 850 tons. Because of all those, we end up using uh, a large amount of exotic steels. There's some junction boxes near the access hub. Uh, the brownfield scope is probably as important and I would say maybe more important than the module in itself. Having to come up with designs and then working and executing it offshore on a producing platform. The use of new techniques and modifying an operational platform made close cooperation between all parties one of the top priorities for the project. Number one is safety, incident injury free. Number two was focus on quality and number three was collaboration or interface management was a key to our successes on the project. One of the key differences on the older project is the way that we've tried to include all levels of the supply chain as being part of the greater older team. We need our suppliers to work with us and make things happen. They have they actually stepped up. The tie back will extend the field life of Britannia and unlock the potential of the older field. A lot of it is really tying back into pre-existing infrastructure that allows us to maximize the life of all of the pre-existing assets that we have uh, here in the North Sea. That will make other smaller or technically challenged projects become more viable. 
that's the overall goal for the UK government is to maximize our economic recovery as well as drive more collaboration in the industry. And I think the Alder Project demonstrates that both of those can happen. By developing a technologically challenging and marginal field, this Greater Alder team has set an example for future North Sea developments. That will prompt a lot of people both inside Chevron as well as in other companies to think, okay, how can we do that same thing to progress other opportunities in the UK that we otherwise might have just said, well, they're too small, it's too high a temperature, it's too high a pressure, we can't do it. Now they'll say, hey, we can do that. Technology is set to play an increasing role in unlocking opportunities for Chevron in the North Sea. I'm very pleased that we've managed to execute this project without any days away from work and serious incidents. This project has actually taught me that resilience is one of the main characteristics if you're going to be successful in all your endeavours. The highlight for me, I think, is the teamwork. It shows a commitment to the UK, commitment to the North Sea, and a commitment to everybody here that has worked tirelessly to bring this project to first gas. When people say something can't be done, we say just step back and let us show you how it can be. And this is a great example of that in the Alder Project.